Hello. This particular week, the 11th Sunday of Ordinary Time, for us here at St. Anthony's is very special because uh, Sunday, June the 13th, is the Feast of St. Anthony of Padua. And so it's our uh, patronal feast, the feast of the uh, saint who we honor and who has himself honored us with his life and his holiness. Every uh, week when I do these reflections, of course, it's on the Sunday Gospel. So it's quite important, but uh, it's really much better before you listen to the reflection to read the Gospel reading. This particular week, our Gospel reading is from Luke uh, 73, chapter 73, verse 36 to chapter 8, verse 3. That would be the, the full, the long reading. This gospel is uh, quite interesting. I guess they all are, but this in its own way. Um, the Pharisees have invited Jesus. And they're quite curious, it seems, to find out who he is. Who is this Jesus? Perhaps he's a prophet. Perhaps, as far as they're concerned, he is just someone pretending to be a prophet. They really don't know. And they're, uh, they're, they're curious, to say the least, and perhaps they're even concerned because their position is threatened as he claims a lot of the loyalty of the, of the people, a loyalty which, in turn, they are not going to have because they're going to transfer it seems they're transferring their loyalty from the Pharisees, from the other church, uh, Jewish church leaders, to Jesus. When he goes to this house, a sinful woman, and that's the term that's used, a sinful woman, finds out about it, goes, stands behind him, as he reclines at table, they don't sit at table, he reclines at table, she stands at his feet and washes, dries, and anoints his feet. Gives him a kiss of love. And then he asks them, this, well, and after he gives them his little parable, he asks uh, the um, host, who has the greater love? Well, the one who's been forgiven most. He says, quite correct. In this little section after this story, uh, the story itself does not identify or name the sinful woman. But in the little section afterwards, it makes mention that he journeys off with a group of women uh, and the twelve, but a group of women who have been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, one of whom is Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven devils have gone out. Obviously, he's uh, chased the devils out from her. There has been an association that's been traditional in the church, but is not uh, verified in the gospel reading but traditional because the two things are so close, that the sinful woman is indeed Mary Magdalene, from whom the seven devils have gone out. Mary has a great deal of love for Jesus. Her love obviously comes from the fact that he has given her new life from the miracle that he has worked for her of chasing the devils out she, in turn, finding that she has a new life, a life full of goodness, has gone to him and wept for her sins. And because of her sorrow, uh, born of the new life she has received, because of her sorrow and her faith, she has forgiven her sins. And Jesus says at the end to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. 
faith. We really wouldn't be here at this website unless we had faith. Well, unless, of course, we could be curious like the, um, uh, the Pharisees. But most of us are going to be people of faith. Where does our faith come from? What is it born of? It may be a number of it may have a number of sources. Faith that comes from fear. Fear of a loss of heaven and being sent to hell. Many of us have at times had that faith, kind of faith. And the Lord doesn't mind instilling a little fear in us for the danger that will lies in uh, ahead for us if we are not people of love and people who are obedient to the God's walls. Next, uh, perhaps we have faith because of assurances of truth in the church. And we believe what we've been taught and, that, and we've been taught that this is the one true church. And so we put our faith in our church. Perhaps we've grown up in the church. We have faith simply because through the many years, faith has been nurtured in, in the church and has grown, developed, and continues to till to, uh, today. In this particular story, I think the Lord is really promoting the greatest and the best source of faith. And that is faith that is born of love in him. That really, in the end, should be the basis of our faith. We believe in him because he loves us so much. And that daily we find in our relationship with him that he gives us life, that he nurtures within us his life of goodness, and that daily there's a richness of life within us because we live in him. We live daily with him in us. And we find in our relationship with others who also have faith that we find that we grow in love for him as we, as we meet him in others, and not only directly in our own life, but we meet him through others. May your life be a life of faith, born out of the love of Jesus. God bless you all.